Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As part of looking at some of the features which are going to be available in version 18 of WYSIWYG Web Builder, um, today I want us to continue looking at some of these uh, features. So we ended on the previous video or the last video on the accordion. So from there, we have simplified ribbon. So WW18 has a new redesigned ribbon. Uh, mode that is simplified ribbon. The simplified ribbon is a mix between the classic two bar and ribbon. It shows the commands and a single line, which um, not only brings a modern interface to WWB but also frees up space to show more of the page you are working on. So, uh, I think basically the ribbon that we used to see in Wizard Web Builder has been. Uh, redesigned, which now makes it um, possible easier for you to switch between tools, especially based on what page you are working on. So that I find cool. Um, yeah, so that is with regard to the redesign ribbon. So these are some of the snapshots of the ribbons and you have the chance to switch between the interface you want, especially for the ribbons from the options within the application. So as you can see that. So these are various ribbons. Now from there, you have other page that is added a quick and easy way to rearrange floating layers. So as you can see, if you want to rearrange floating layers, there's a section over here, which more or less are just arrows to the top and then to the bottom. That would help you to be able to rearrange floating layers within Web Builder 18. And then also added a plus section by where the pages and uh, names of the pages show at the top of the ruler guide in Web Builder 18. So in case you want to create a new page, you can simply create new pages from there without necessarily going to the um, page manager. And then from um, there, you have some few other options as well to be able to create new pages. If you want to rename your newly created page, you can simply just double click on it and then the page is going to be renewed. So yeah, these are some of the things that you can see with the version 18. And then also over here says added ability to set minimum font size for automatically scale new object in other breakpoints. So this is basically with regard to text. So if you have um, new objects you're added to different parts of the breakpoint or even existing object, automatically you'd want to set the font size to a specific font size. That is the 10. That is if you want to have this done in your project. So all font size and other breakpoints are automatically going to scale to font size 10. And then from here, you also have error reports. So error reports is going to give you an idea about what's um, probably not so right within your website project. So you are able to amend them before you publish. And then you have page properties. Um, yeah, so Set horizontally should only be used with absolute fixed layouts, not for layout grid. So yes, if you are using layout grid, there's no need for you to select or specify center horizontally. And then you also have the uh, ability to rotate left 90 and then right 90 and flip commands for a uh, rotatable object. So if you are using object that can be rotated, maybe an example is a shape up to, you have the chance to be able to rotate them and then flip them around within the application. And then you also have um, added support for Windows 11 snap layout. So basically this is, has to do with a um, uh, feature of Windows 11, where when you are maximizing um, a window within the operating system, you have these various layouts in which you would want to maximize the, the window too. So that is what is happening for Web Builder 18. Once you're about to uh, maximize it, it's asking you whether you want to go with any of these layouts. So it's going to snap in for uh, based on the layout that you select. So that is also a cool feature in here. And this is going to make it easier to multi-tax um, if you have a couple other windows open that you'd want to be switching between them. Then you can select any of this and then uh, you're able to work on them easily. So this says many property dialogues are now resizable. Also, the software remember the window placement. So the next time you open the properties, it will have the same position. So as you can see, 
um, there's this section that allows you to resize a dialog box and based on how you resize it to even if you close the application and it's going to keep notice of it and once you open, reopen it and it's going to be the same size so that is with regard to the dialog box and then also there's added ability to automatically hide scroll backs and workspace so this is basically going to be when you're working on a page and then um, the mouse is not necessarily active on the scroll bar and it's going to be something thin which would uh, be able to see if it's not available so once you move your case out to it then it is going to expand back for you to be able to um, scroll that is using the scroll bar so that is that over here and to be able to activate that behavior you have to go to the options and then set that as you can see over here and then from there you have added open file location to context menu of the toolbox when an extension is selected this and then this will open extension for the windows explorer okay so you have the ability to open um, the location of extension that has been installed and if you want to maybe modify or remove or add other extensions you are easily able to do that from there and then you have global replace so added ability to place the class property that style for all pages objects so as part of the existing global replace tool you have the chance to also uh, replace that is uh, the class property for styles so in case now that you have styles almost everywhere within web builder it should be easier to also replace properties within um, style so that is what you have here and then there is a template a new template here as well and then once you come down there's um drop down menu so it says add a drop down menu item the two box the drop down menu is simplified version of the teamable menu without jQuery drop down menu uses bootstrap 5 so this is basically drop down menu which is using bootstrap as its UI and then um to be able to display a uh, menu item so you can configure how it's going to look with the properties of it let's just take a look at this and uh, demo here so this is a drop down menu as you can see it from here and then you have snap scroll so add a support for horizontal scrolling so the snap scroll feature also allows you to be able to uh, scroll that is either um, vertically horizontally ideally it was just vertically but now you can also scroll horizontally and then from there you have overlay menu added blur property that adds uh, this adds a backdrop blur filter to overlay background so let's just take a look at this so once we click on this you notice that we have a blurred background for our overlay menu so that is cool as well so let's just continue to see what more we have here okay so basically that's for this page let's just continue to the next page so here says a panel menu so added review type in addition to overlay and push in review mode the panel menu will initially show um, that is the icon only and when the mouse is over the menu it will expand so i think this is um, the properties of it let's just take a look at this demo and see how that is going to be so this is the panel menu and as you can see that so once you open the page you have the panel menu you know stacked over here with the icons based on what you hover over it shows the full menu over here and then you are able to navigate to the respective pages so that's it here as well and other fixed type in addition to value so this is all part of the properties of the overlay that is a panel menu or the overlay menu which is available in version 18 and yeah so that is also a blade property as part of the panel menu which you can see here and these are the properties or options of it you're able to specify the size of icon and then even a break point you want to have the uh, menu um, behave the way it is behaving then you have a few more options with it now next we have responsive menu so added underline property so that's it over here uh it'll be good to have a demo of this to be able to see how that is going to be so responsive menu so you have an underlying property 
Okay, not so sure where the underline is, but this is a responsive menu. And here's the CSS menu. Also, add a space between size mode. The items are eventually distributed. Uh, the spacing between each pair of adjust, um, adjust sent items in the same is the same. So, okay, so these are the spaces that you can have. You have stretch, you have viable, you have fixed, and then, yeah, I think so. These are the various spaces that you have. Available you have available within the CSS menu and Wizard Web Builder version 18. So we can take a look at a demo of this and then see how that is going to be. So these are the various spaces available. And from there you have mega menu. So you also have um, added icon offset. So you're able to add sort of like a pattern to icons in version 18. That is when you are using the mega menu. So this is how it's going to look. So these are the icons. So you can have an offset of it where you'd want it uh, position based on your preference and which will grab your version 18. So that is also cool to see. And then from there, you have teamable button added to new icon alignment. So you, um, initially it used to be just left and right. Now you have inline left and then inline right. So let's take a look at this. So this is icon left. Icon right, inline left, inline right, and then this is the default um, uh, size as well. So yeah, so these are the options available with the T-Mobile um, button. And then you have, uh, so yeah, so basically these are the various icon alignment which are available. And then also you can specify the size of the icon. And then from there, there is another template here as well. And you have animation, so added alias functionality this makes it possible to give animations an easier to remember name so so this is really going to be useful when you work with animations so based on animations that you use for specific features or properties within your project you can easily rename them for to something that you can easily remember so that if you want to reuse them in a project you are working on you can easily just go for them so that's what you have with animations here and there are a few more options also available with animations. So the next one is Google Fonts, which is added more than 350 new fonts, which is cool to know because Google Fonts has a lot more fonts that used to be available um, within version 17. So if more has been added, it means you have, you know, a lot or a wide range of fonts to work with within your website project. So that is what you see over here. Then we have event. So added um, set value action. This can be used to set value of a specific object. For example, set a value of a progress bar or input box. So this is also part of the event that has been added over here. That is a set value uh, feature. Then you also have um, added toggle dark uh, theme action. So the event, as part of the event, you have the option to also be able to toggle between dark and then um, light mode as well. There are many more options or properties available with the event um, in version 18. And then you have conditions. So added set class action. This can be used to set a class that is a style um, for a specific conditions. So um, conditions has also been around for a while, but as part of it, you have the option to be able to set uh, that as class. So class will basically related to the type of style you'd want to use in the application. And I have um, edit box, so added clone button to quickly add a copy of selected conditions. So yes, so you can clone conditions that you've already added to base. Just like you, you have with events, you can copy and then paste. That's why you can clone and then edit, the edit them. And I have another template here as well. Added ability to set the font size of the editor. So if you are using the HTML uh, properties to be able to add some codes to your website, you have the option to change the font size that you'd want to use for your codes over here. So that is also cool. And I have blog, um, blog carousel now uses bootstrap five, no longer depends on jQuery. So yes, you also have a chance to be able to use carousel within blocks. And then this time around, it uses the bootstrap um, UI for that. Next, we have sitemap. So it says holding down the shift key while changing the Frequently or priority will apply the new value to all pages in the project. So this is also a way you are able to 
work with site maps in version 18. And then from there, you have ready to use JavaScript to added Visual Web Builder logos, light and dark. So you have um, light and dark mode um, logo of Visual Web Builder added to the ready to use JavaScript. Now let's continue to page seven and see what features are there as well. So here we have internal optimization. So version 18 also has many internal optimizations. And although this release has more than 150 new features, the size of the executable has not increased. So basically what this is saying is that uh, in as much as there's been a lot of uh, features added to Web Builder 18, the size of the, um, that is, the web builder hasn't changed, so it stays the same, so it doesn't take so much space on your uh, PC. So that is also good to know over here. And then you have Tell Me Search. So when using the new Office 2022 team, the Tell Me Search box is located on the ribbon caption, and then the input field wow, will be minimized when it does not have the input focus. So this is also uh, based on the theme that you select to use when you are using the application. So if you have Office 2022 theme selected, it means you have the Tell Me Search, which basically allows you to search for things within the application. So that is where you have a demonstration of it over here. And then there is also another template here as well. Another template and then on and on. So um, these are features that we should be looking forward to in Wizard Web Builder version 18. I must say that as I now recording the video, version 18 has been released and I've grabbed a copy yet. So if you haven't grabbed a copy yet, maybe you should. And subsequent videos, we'll take a look at all these features that has been listed within the application itself. And then there will be subsequent tutorials on how to use these uh, features. So. That will be just about it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.